Are you considering building your house using EPS panels? Maybe you like the idea of EPS panels and the speed with which you can build your house using them. Well, in this video, I'll try to answer three questions you probably asked yourself about EPS panels. And hopefully by the end of the video, you'll come to appreciate what EPS panels are as an alternative building technology. Hi, I'm Nick Moyama. And let's get started with the first question. Are EPS panels strong? When you buy EPS panels for the first time, this is how they look like. EPS stands for expanded polystyrene and it's the white material that you see. At first glance, EPS panels don't look very strong. You even wonder how they're able to support the weight of a house. They are so light that you can easily carry them around. So asking yourself about the strength of EPS panels is a valid question. Now, surrounding the EPS core is a high tensile strength steel mesh. This steel mesh gives some structural strength to the panels. The steel mesh overlap with each other, making it easy to connect one panel to the next one using binding wire. This adds extra rigidity to the panels and to the walls of your house. The EPS core has a wavy design and is not entirely flat. The wavy design ensures that there's more surface area for the concrete to bond with the panels and the steel mesh. So are EPS panels strong? Well, in my opinion, they are. That's because when you add concrete to these panels, they become monolithic and bond together pretty well. Also, the addition of the steel mesh adds more structural strength to the panels, which in the end makes your wall pretty strong. They are also able to withstand impact loads like a blow from a sledgehammer, for example, because of how the steel mesh will transfer that force throughout the entire panel. And also, they are able to withstand earthquake and excessive wind loads as long as your house is designed to withstand them. Generally, EPS panels are strong enough for your house. The second question is, what materials are needed to build an EPS panel house? First of all, you'll obviously need EPS panels. There are two types, the wall EPS panel that is used for walling and partitioning purposes, and the flow EPS panel that is used in suspended slabs. Next, you'll need to put starter bars on the foundation or slab of your house. These are placed before you pour concrete on your foundation. The starter bars hold the wall EPS panels in place and connects them to the foundation or slab of your house. Once the EPS panels are tied up together to form a wall, you'll need to shortcut them with a mix of concrete. Let's listen to a contractor who specializes in EPS panels as he tells us what materials are used during the shortcutting process. So, uh, in shortcrete, yes, we use uh, rock sand yes. and cement. So we mix it in the ratio of three to one. Yes. Then you just shortcut using that ratio. Three represent the rock sand and yes. one represents the cement. Oh, okay. After short creating, your walls need to be plastered to achieve a smooth finish to your walls. That means you'll need an extra mix of sand and cement that will be used in the plaster mix for your walls. Now. The plaster mix is separate from the shortcrete mix. The shortcrete mix is used to add concrete to the panels for strength purposes, while the plaster mix is used for finishing purposes on your wall. If you're going to use the floor EPS panel for your upper floor slab, you'll need reinforcement bars and concrete to cast your slab. Beneath the floor panels, you can plaster them to cover them and create a ceiling finish for your house. So those are some of the major high-level materials you need to build your EPS panel house. The third question is, are EPS panels affordable? In my opinion, EPS panels are affordable in terms of time and labor savings. Because of how fast you can put them on site, you end up reducing the construction time needed to build your house. Depending on the size of your house, like a simple bungalow for example, the EPS wall panels can be set up on site within a day and short critic works can take up to a week to complete. As you can see, this is a fast construction technology. 
and since time directly influences labor costs, you end up saving money that would have gone to labor. Plumbing and electrical works can be done quickly by placing the conduits inside the panels before the short critting process. This again saves you on time and labor costs. There's also a cost saving component that comes because of the lightweight factor of EPS panels. Even after concreting the panels, they'll still weigh less when compared to a stone block house. This means you save money on the materials needed to build your foundations, slabs, columns, and beams. But in terms of materials, EPS panels require lots of concrete to achieve their necessary strength. You'll also need additional plastering to make your walls smoother for finishing or for painting, for example. So the cost of concreting can be at par with a stone block house, for example. The floor EPS panel, on the other hand, does have cost-saving benefits. One, you don't need to hire steel trappers that are needed to hold your slab while it cures. Two, the volume of concrete that you pour is less than a steel trapper slab because of the space that the floor EPS panel occupies. This allows you to cut down on concrete costs for your slab. So at the end of the day, you need to sit down and budget properly for your upcoming house and decide on whether you're going to build using EPS panels or you're going to build using stone blocks. Ultimately, it's your decision and you should go for something that works for you. I hope this video has been of help to you, especially if you're considering building your upcoming house using EPS panels. If you have any questions, kindly leave them in a comment below. And if you want to learn more about EPS panels, then watch this next video.